um, from Cisco and here to tell us what the Internet of Things could mean for Wales and in particular for your business. Would you please welcome Sarah Ecclestone. Thank you and good afternoon everybody. Um, up until today I've never actually been asked to articulate what the Internet of Things is and the benefits that it can bring in uh, under 45 minutes and today I've only got 15 minutes so I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to talk very quickly and two, um, I'm going to just give you a glimpse into what the Internet of Things is and some of the benefits that I hope it could bring to Wales. Let me start explaining what the Internet of Things is by first of all explaining what the Internet today does for us. If you think about everything we've ever connected to the internet today, it's basically been a core computing device. It's been a laptop, or it's been a tablet like an iPad, or it's been a, a smartphone like a Samsung S4 of that nature. But everything that we've connected so far has had its core function is to compute. And there are an awful lot of them. There are 13 billion things connected to the internet today. And it's not just how many there are, it's also the, the massive exponential growth in these devices. Apple, for example, sell half a billion dollars of these devices every single day to connect to the internet. And in terms of phones, as I'm standing up here today speaking, there are currently 800 million smartphones connected to the internet. And Apple isn't even the leader in those, it's Android that's the leader. Four out of ten of those smartphones are actually Samsung. In addition, as I said, it's the exponential growth. If, you, if any of you are old enough to remember when the radio was invented, from the moment the radio was invented, it took 38 years before 50 million people had a radio. Compare that to today, where Apple sell 50 million iPads every quarter. So the exponential growth in these devices and the volume of these devices, plus add that to the social media that we have, uh, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, all the things that we have there. Um, apparently every, every, second, every two seconds, two people uh, connect on LinkedIn. Um, what this means is that we all feel so connected. But what I'm about to show you is that actually we are so not connected. As I mentioned, there are 13 billion things connected to the internet right now, but we're predicting that by 2020 there will be 50 billion things connected to the internet. But that's not the point of the Internet of Things. The point of the Internet of Things is that it will be things that, whose core function is not computing connected to the internet. It will be truly things. Things like your washing machine, your microwave, your heating, your lighting, street lights, traffic lights, speed cameras, your cars, soil, trees, grass, your clothing, all of these things will be connected to the internet. And everything that I just mentioned today actually already is, and I'm going to give you some examples. So it's this internet of these things, things that are nothing to do with generally computing, that is really going to grow in the next few years. But I won't take you to the future, I'll tell you about some of the things that we have connected to the internet right now today. First of all, connecting cars. Your car is going to be one of the first things that you see connected to the internet. Already, every um, BMW that goes out of the factory has got a Vodafone SIM in it. And you can stream music to your car um, using a service called rara.com. What's also uh, the case, though, is when you connect your car to the internet, not only are you connected, um, which brings you benefits like if any of you have teenage children, and you lend your car to your children um, to go somewhere, when that car is connected to the internet, what it means is you know when your children have arrived safely. You knew, how the route, you knew, knew the route they took, you knew how fast they drove there, you knew if they jumped any red lights, um, you know if they drove safely. So it brings all those kind of benefits. You'll get bespoke car insurance as well. Um, so it brings a lot of those kinds of things for you. But in addition, what it means is that when you connect a car to the internet, the lovely thing about a car is that it's mobile. So if you, in, the, the reverse is also true. Not only are you connecting your car to the internet, but you're creating a mobile internet access point. So in Brazil, the Ministry of Justice have taken, done exactly that. They've taken 14 trucks. They've connected those 14 trucks to the internet. And when they need internet access in a rural area that doesn't typically have internet access, they simply drive the truck there, which is something that could also be done here in many of the rural areas in Wales. Cars aren't the only thing. Um, Parking meters is something else we've done. We have a, a meter that's about the size of a small dinner plate. And it goes in the ground underneath the tarmac of the parking meter, and it connects that parking meter to the internet. So as you drive over it, you automatically get charged. If any of you have children who are looking forward one day to growing up and being a traffic warden, I would advise against it because we won't be needing those anymore. It's going to be the case that it's all done automatically on the internet. Why is that good for councils? Well, it's really good for councils because currently about 30% of the time parking meters are being used and not paid for. So by using these internet connected parking meters, it means they get about 30% more parking revenue in a council. And that can also apply to Wales. That's being trialed and done in many cities around the globe. And in fact, it's being trialed just here in Birmingham. 
So that's being done today as well. The advantage to you as a user of having a parking meter connected to the internet is that you can find a parking space easily because you simply look on an app to find where your nearest parking spot is to where you want to go. And again, this is being done in many cities around the globe. It's not so much of an issue in Wales, but if you happen to live in Paris, that would be a wonderful uh, thing for you because actually the average car owner who lives in Paris spends four years of their life looking for a parking spot. So now they won't need to do that. They simply look at the app and they find it. We're connecting vending machines to the internet. If any of you saw that Coca-Cola bought 16 million IP addresses, that's why. It's one for every Coca-Cola vending machine. So when you order a Coca-Cola drink, uh, it simply is connected to the internet. It gets the recipe, therefore, over the internet and mixes the drink for you. And that massively reduces the distribution chain that, that Coca-Cola have and brings them huge supply chain benefits and big cost savings, as you can imagine. We at Cisco are also connecting vending machines to the, uh, to the internet, so you will never again have to uh, arrive on a train platform, decide you want a Mars bar, get to the vending machine and find they've run out of Mars bars. Because as that vending machine gets low on Mars bars, we'll tell Mars and Mars will get a, a shipment of Mars bars sent to them. So you'll never again feel like a chocolate bar and, never, and not be able to get one. So these are some of the things that we're connecting to the internet that are already done today. Examples that I think would be nice to apply for Wales are we've connected cows to the internet in Scotland and England. Uh, we already have them connected, and you might think, why would you connect a cow to the internet? Well, by connecting a cow to the internet, number one, it can tell the farmer when it's absolutely ready for milking. Number two, you tell the farmer also the sleeping patterns, the stress levels, the health conditions of the cow. It doesn't just tell him where the cow is, although obviously you can track the herd, but it tells him how the cow is. So if that cow is starting to feel ill, he calls the vet immediately, and that illness, or which can actually indeed even be predicted before it, it, it has uh, symptoms, um, that illness is therefore um, notified earlier to the farmer, the farmer calls the vet, and before that disease is spread amongst the cows, um, then you, um, it, 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 it cuts short the, the, the vet's bills because it gets stopped. You might think that's not a big deal and it's a silly example, but does anybody know how many cows there are in Wales? Anyone want to guess? There's 223,000 cows in Wales. Um, 223,208, to be precise, I'm told, which means that it is actually quite a big example. And it's not the only agricultural example. We're also connecting soil to the internet, farm soil. So what it means is we put sensors in the soil and the soil tells us when it needs watering, it tells us when it needs fertilising, it tells us when the, the, the fruit or, or the vegetable is ripe for picking. So what this means is that a farmer who has a large area of land doesn't need to farm that whole land all the time. He goes and he waters the fields that need watering. He fertilises only the areas of land that need fertilising. He picks the fruit when it's ripe. Many farms have deployed this around the globe. You may think it's all sounding a little bit Star Trek, but actually a company called Lebellium, who makes sensors, 18% of, of the sensors that they sell are for the agricultural market for this kind of application. And one of the nicest examples is a vineyard in Spain who have deployed this. And by doing this, they've only fertilising the vineyards or the parts of the vineyard that require it when it's essential. They've therefore reduced the fertiliser cost by 20% and they've increased the agricultural output, the, the grape output, by 15%. Now, if you consider that since 2011, the agricultural revenue in Wales has declined by 29%, maybe the Internet of Things increasing the productivity of farms is one way of recouping some of that in the same way that the vineyard has done. Same amount of farms, same amount of farmers. It's just a more productive way of farming. It's called precision farming. So these are some of the things that we've already deployed today uh, in the Internet of Things, and I could talk about so many more, but I have such a short time that I'm just going to leave it there in terms of what, what the Internet of Things is. But I will drill down on one particular example of how it can really help Wales, and I could have picked an education example, an industry example, connected mining, connected ports, we could have really drilled down on agriculture. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to drill down on healthcare and the healthcare of Welsh citizens. Um, because if you think about it, a, great, a, a huge amount of Wales, 654 districts in Wales, are deemed rural, not urban. In England, one in five people live in a rural area. In Wales, one in three people live in a rural area. In addition to that, the population in rural areas is older than the population in urban areas in Wales. So what it means is, by definition, that the people more likely to need hospitalisation, more likely to have chronic diseases like heart conditions, cancers, etc., and in addition to that, when you look at the hospitalisation rates of the urban areas and the rural areas in Wales, the hospitalisation rates in Wales is much lower, probably because people don't have as much access to hospitals. It's greater distance for them to go. Maybe they don't have the mobility that they need to get to hospital. So how do you provide 
better health care to all those citizens, one in three citizens living in Wales, but at the same or lower budget. And the Internet of Things can really help with that. For example, we have a pill that you can swallow right now. Um, it's a tablet, not an iPad tablet, like a, a Nurofen tablet. Um, and it's a tablet that you swallow, and it connects you to the Internet. It then monitors your location, obviously, but it also look, monitors your blood pressure, your temperature, your heart rate, your blood sugar levels, etc. All the things, if you think about it, that a nurse writes on a clipboard at the bottom of your bed when you're in hospital. The pill does that, the internet does that, because it takes all that data, sends it to the cloud, and then provides it to a doctor. So you're constantly being monitored by the internet. That's actually a better service for a, for a patient, if you think about it, because one, they're getting constant monitoring, whereas when you're in hospital, you actually get a couple of visits a day from a nurse or a doctor. So it's constant monitoring for those patients. But number two, they don't have to go into hospital for it. This is so much better for patients who don't want to go into hospital, patients in remote areas who can't get to hospital, but it's also a much lower cost of caring for patients after operations, etc. You don't have to hospitalise them to monitor them. You also don't have to hospitalise them to medicate them, because the same technology is a technology by which, if they swallow a pill, it will send a text message to the doctor, and the doctor will then get that text message and know you've taken your medication. So they know that you've taken your medication, they know that you're okay today. They don't need to keep you in hospital to do that. You can go home, back to your rural area, lower cost, and again, much better for the citizen. So obviously that provides um, really good advantages in terms of alternatives to hospitalisation. Another thing to think about is if you do look at the Welsh um, healthcare budget, the largest single line item, which is quite normal, um, is for the care of mental health. Things like Alzheimer's and dementia, and again, with an ageing population uh, in rural areas, that's very much a need of, of our healthcare system. So what we also have is wearable technology. Intel in uh, Ireland have been developing uh, clothing like T-shirts that you can wear, and as you wear those, that clothing, um, it, will, it will also um, send signals to the cloud, to the internet, it's connected to the internet, and it will do exactly the same, send exactly the same kind of diagnostics information that I just told you. But it will also say if a patient has fallen, or if a, or if a patient is moving erratically or in a, in a strange way, in an abnormal way for that patient, or also if a patient isn't moving at all. And that wearable technology will then see that, send it up to the cloud in the internet, and again, this is available today, and a doctor will get a text message or will get an alert. What's more, if you have a patient at home, rather than a caregiver having to go to that, to that home to see that patient, and that patient may have fallen over last night, an elderly person may have fallen over last night, but the caregiver doesn't get there till this morning, and that's the first we know that this patient has fallen. When they're wearing this wearable technology that's connected to the internet, we know immediately when they've fallen. And what's wonderful is that the internet provides machine-to-machine -machine capability. So at the beginning, when I talked about the car, connected car, one of the things we have is connected cars where the braking systems are connected. So when the car in front of you brakes, it tells the internet. Your car is also connected to the internet. It knows it's braked, your car brakes. All before you've even seen the red braking light go on. And that's the kind of machine-to-machine -machine communication, and that is in existence today, and self-driving cars are also being trialled in the United States today. So that kind of machine-to-machine -machine communication, now let's apply that to the healthcare example. Because now we've got a patient who's wearing technology that's connecting them to the internet, and they've fallen, so we know that they've fallen. At the same time, ambulances, police cars, fire trucks are also connected to the internet. At Cisco, we make a router, it's called the 819, it's been approved by the Home Office, and it connects the 999 vehicle to the internet. So when that patient falls, the internet knows. The ambulance is connected to the internet, the ambulance is automatically routed to that patient. It doesn't need there to be someone there to see that happen, so they don't need to be in a home. It doesn't need to wait till the next morning when the caregiver gets there. So you're giving better standards of care to the actual people who need it in these rural areas, and you're also saving a lot of money because now caregivers only go to see the people that actually need the care that day. They're not having to go around and do checkups and monitor their patients every day because actually those patients are already connected to the internet, so we already know how they are. So these are just some of the examples of in the healthcare space, and again, um, it would really help to reduce the healthcare budget, um, but it would also really provide a much better healthcare service for many of the patients that really don't want to travel and get into those hospitalised areas. 
I'd love to talk to you more about how similar things can work for education, how similar things can work for connected minds. We've done exactly the same thing in connected minds where we're connecting minds and the plants and the traffic in the mines, and that has two benefits as well. Again, there's a cost-saving benefit because what it means is we can optimize the truckloads of mines, um, we can optimize the business processes of the mining, but we can also have the internet connectivity in the mine, monitoring the conditions of the mines and making it safer for the Welsh civilians who work in those mines. So that's another example. Connected ports is another example. Um, and one of the lovely things that we've done in Barcelona, which of course is also a port, is we've connected inhalers. I don't know if there are any asthmatics in the room, but we've connected inhalers to the internet. So every time someone takes a puff on their, in on their inhaler, a signal it gets told to the internet, the and that, the cloud connects that. All that, all that data gets analysed in the cloud. What that means is, over time, in parallel to the Internet of Things, is this whole strategy of big data. And big data isn't about there being large volumes of data that come from this. It's about being able to analyse that big data and those volumes of data in almost real time and gain insight from them. And that's exactly what they did in Barcelona. As everyone was taking the puff of the inhaler and it was being connected to the internet and telling the internet, they noticed that on certain days, people were having to take a puff of their inhaler much more often. And the big data analytics engine in the background figured out something that humans in many, many years had never figured out, which is that people having to take this puff on their inhaler much more often when there's a, a delivery, a shipload of soy being delivered into Barcelona. So they figured out that that was obviously changing the, the air quality and it was affecting asthmatics. So now, going forward, they're able to um, advise asthmatics when a shipload of soy is coming in and advise them, close your windows that day or take your inhaler with you that day, the air quality is going to be poor. So that's something that we've done in Barcelona. I don't know what the advantages in Wales would be. I don't know what the effects are. It will take the Internet of Things and big data to be able to tell us that. But they will be some of the other advantages that we get. And then, of course, there's all the advantages to small businesses and all the pr business processes that go with that. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have time to go through private enterprise examples today, but I hope the healthcare example really sort of shows you how the business processes can really be improved, both from a cost reduction, but also from how it helps people, actually helps civilians. So what I'd like to finish on is just to say two things. So number one is that um, one of the objections I might hear is, yes, but we don't have internet connectivity in all these rural areas in Wales. But you see, that's the beauty of the internet of things. Because whereas internet connectivity with, say, a GSM phone um, is wonderful, it's also very chatty. It's a very chatty pro pro uh, protocol, which is why even when you're not using your phone, it's still draining of battery. But now there are new technologies for the Internet of Things where we don't have to talk. You know, a patient being connected to the Internet doesn't need anything like the same bandwidth as a mobile phone conversation or as an email. It's much fewer messaging, which means it can be done much more cheaply, and it means it can be done with much longer battery life in the sensors that are connecting them. So new technologies are being developed for connectivity, for connection of things to the internet. So going back to the computing example at the beginning, even if you, can't, if you don't have internet activity in some of these rural homes that can connect your computers, it doesn't mean you can't have internet access to connect your T-shirt or to connect a pill that you swallow or to connect your car. It's a different kind of connectivity. It's a, it's a different kind of bandwidth model. And those technologies are being developed and they're much cheaper. So a lovely thing for Wales is that actually the Internet of Things is surreptitiously going to provide ways of providing this internet connectivity to these rural areas that otherwise may not come, have come about. The second thing I'd like to say, and the point that I will finish on, is to say once again, none of what I've discussed today is a futures technology. It's all deployed today, it's all available today, there are cities already deploying it, and it could just as well um, equally be deployed here in Wales and be providing the benefits to the Welsh citizens that it is in other areas and other countries. Thank you.